Hi! Today you'll be learning how to perform an air dribble. This video is designed for complete beginners at the game and aims to simplify the air dribble mechanic to its core. The footage we'll be reviewing today will not be some flashy tornado air dribble mechanics. Instead, we'll be looking at the bare minimum amount of player input to get a very basic Walter air dribble going. This video will go in depth on each step of the way, so even if you're an intermediate player, you might still get some clarity on where the ball goes after each touch. All right. Let's get started. Step 1. Rolling the ball. To roll the ball in Rocket League, you must first get very close to it, then slowly add momentum to the ball towards the direction you want to roll it. Contrary, if you instead touch the ball at higher speed, it will bounce off the ground. Once you've given it some momentum, increasing the speed now will not make the ball bouncy, giving you a perfect roll. Step 2. Angle of roll. Now it's time to decide the angle at which you want to roll the ball. Ideally, you want the ball to move towards the goal even after you stop actively rolling it. That way, when you're in the air with the ball, you will only do minor correction to its height and not its direction. Step 3. The break. The same way you get the ball off the ground by the difference in relative speed of you and the ball is the same way you want to get it off the wall. To do this, you must get some space between you and the ball. This way, the next time you contact it, it will bounce off, lifting it in the air. If you do not do this step, you will simply roll the ball along the wall to the top. Step 4. The Adjustment this is a crucial step to getting the air dribble right. At this step, when you have given the ball some space, you can now adjust the angle at which you wish to hit the ball up. If you do not do this, you will have no direction control. This is why this step is important. You can go wide or you can go minor with your adjustment. It takes time and practice to get this right. Step five, the hit. This one's hard. To hit the ball correctly, you must hit it with enough force for it to go high up, but not too far to get away. The reason for this is because if you hit the ball too hard, it might bounce off the ceiling or you might not be able to reach it before it starts falling back down. This is a make or break moment. Furthermore, it is important to avoid hitting the ball before it has passed the curve along the wall. Hitting it here will result in the ball rolling up the wall and you will not be able to jump. Lastly, right after you hit it, you can add a small break so that when you jump, you'll end up below the ball and not fly past above it. If you're above the ball, you cannot air dribble. Best you can do is a ground pitch. This step is optional too. You can avoid being faster than the ball by hitting it without boosting. This will make sure you're slower than the ball from the impact alone. However, it depends on how fast the ball is rolling, so use it where you can and please know that this is an option. Step six, the follow-up. This is by far the hardest step in this mechanic. For you to face the ball after you hit it, you must jump off the wall, then look left and air roll right, aka clockwork. Now these controls will be completely mirrored if you're doing this on the other wall or facing the other direction. But for now, we're sticking to this side of the wall facing the goal to the left. For keyboard, which is what I currently use, that will be clicking right click for jump, A for left, and E for air roll right, aka clockwork. For controller, well let's be real, most people play on controllers so probably you already know how to turn left and jump. Oh, right. Uh, well, if you don't have air roll bound by default in your settings, then simply just look up a tutorial on Reddit or YouTube which button is best to bind to air roll right or left. Great, now that that's done, the important part here is that you remember these are subtle adjustments. Only press these buttons lightly so that your car faces towards the ball. Remember, 
the holding down jump versus tapping it lightly will change how far you jump. This will depend on your situation and takes time to get right, especially when you're jumping off the wall. Step 7. The air dribble. Once you've aligned yourself with the ball, it's time for the fun part, the air dribble. For an air dribble to be an air dribble, you must catch the ball before it starts falling. Because like we said earlier, you hit the ball while it's stationary or having the opposite momentum, you bop it. Once you catch up to the ball, make sure you hit it very lightly and feather tap your boost so that you can control your height. This takes time and practice and alternatively, you can try just by hitting it at all while it's in the air. You want to hit the ball at the bottom and towards the direction you want it to go. This way, the ball will get both height and it will move towards the direction you want it. Step 8. Practice. This takes a lot of practice and effort. It is not an easy mechanic, but it's a fun one for sure. For me, this was the first mechanic I tried learning in the game. It took me, as a complete beginner, a month and a half to be able to score and then another two months before I could actually use it in a game. So you might say, that seems very hard and it takes too much time. And you'd be right about being hard, but there's no such thing as too much time. You don't know how long it'll take you and you don't know if you'll even enjoy the time learning it. So you can't say it will take too much time. It will take as long as you take to get it. And that's the same for everyone. We tend to value things that are hard and are difficult and things that take time to get right. Which means if you dedicate that time and effort, you and others will value that time and effort. You will feel triumph when doing your first air dribble because it was hard. With that, I would like to thank you for watching. The reason I made this video is because when I started playing this game a year ago, I didn't have such in-depth tutorial to watch. So I hope this was helpful to new players in that same exact position as I was. Like if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Comment if you have any thoughts. And once again, I hope to see you in the next video.